Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. This is Maxi Limit. Congratulations to all of you that got your iPhone 15 on launch day. Some of you guys didn't get it, but don't worry. It's just a matter of time. But, well, that's it. For those of you who got your iPhone 15, you have installed it. You have backed up all your applications. You start using it. Now it's time to discuss about battery life. You know, at one point, your battery will decrease, which means your battery percentage will go from 100% to maybe 99, 98, so and so. To avoid that, today I'm going to show you some tip and trick on how you can use your iPhone and have a long battery life. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few tips. It's important to adjust the settings as soon as you can, because once your battery starts degrading in life, then that's it. It's already too late. So it's now at the beginning of the phone, when you bought your phone, that you have to set up all these uh, settings right away. Okay, so this is my brand new iPhone 15 that I bought. I bought this uh, kind of uh, on launch day, as you can see here. And so first thing we need to know is how to check your battery life. So when you want to go, you go to settings. You want to go down a little bit down the menu. You will find the battery icons. You're going to click on it. And then as you can see right now, this phone is just like what, one or two days old. My battery life right now is at 100%. So Apple say that after two years your battery should be at 80 percent and when your battery falls below 80 percent the capacity of the battery uh, become very critical that you can no longer have a peak performance setting number one that we need to talk about is basically on the home page as you can see here on my uh, on my page here i don't have any widget why because widget works a lot in the background okay so widgets are there and they consume battery. So me personally, I always remove all my widget. If you don't need it, then it's not, don't keep it there. When you have your phone for the first time, eventually all this widget will be there, but go and delay them. Or maybe if you want, you can keep a couple of them. What I do instead is I put it on my home page here. As you can see, I have a couple of widgets here. I have, the, uh, I have the calendar widget, and then I have the news. Those are the main that I use. If I want to use anything else, I will just go on the application and check it myself. So that is step number one. Delete all your widget that you don't need. If you need them, it's fine. If you don't, delete them. Or do as I did choose the most important that you use and keep it on your home screen number two is we're going to talk about uh, the dark mode for the sake of this video today that's why i put it on the bright mode like here but all the time my phone is always on the dark mode dark mode because it consumes less battery because it can turn off all this single pixel and only light up the pixel that you need it's actually on the weather Okay, when I say the weather, what I mean is the weather in the background is always working, especially when we are talking about checking our location. Right? I see I, my, I personally selected my location, so I don't want the phone to be constantly checking everywhere I go to be able to give me the best weather. Now, keep in mind that by doing this way, uh, it might not be accurate depending on where you are because even if you are in a particular city the temperature can differ from one place to another but overall is about what one or two degrees difference which is not really important for me so what i did is i remove the automatic uh weather selection and i personally choose my location perfect here so the, the next step that we want to talk about, we're going to go to here. We want to go to uh, privacy. Under the privacy setting, you want to go to tracking. Next thing we need to talk about is the mm -hmm. location services. Location services, unfortunately, you have to get this turned on to be able to get accuracy on some of the items or some of the things that you visit or some of the places that you visit. However, there's one particular place that 
that location service need to be disconnected and again when we come back to the weather i was telling you about as you can see here the weather will never check my location unless i tell him to do so that's why as you can see here it says never but what we're going to talk about today is under location services under system services these are some couple of by default uh, toggle that apple has selected for us most of these things you can leave them on is okay but a couple of them need to be turned off improving map unless you are helping apple to improve their their system and then you want to participate then is okay but me personally i do not send any information to apple i prefer them to do their own research i have a whole bunch of people that can do that for them they don't need my input anyway i turn off improve maps so yeah, i'm not going to be sending any data to apple to read or to see how my how map is working on my phone or not for me no and then uh, routing and traffic same thing and then iphone analytic i do not send it to apple i don't need to because every time you send it to them it's taking time it's consuming battery and then they're going to be checking your location so and so forth okay now this is okay but the most important thing is this part here the location this locate this this uh, particular section actually track everywhere you go go right now take your phone and check that you have thousands or even one million thing I mean, if you have a new phone that's different but if you have backup from your uh, your, your your iCloud then you have all these places that you visited okay every places that you go will be stored here iPhone so me Personally, I obviously turn this off because I don't want my phone to be tracking everywhere I go because I know exactly where I'm going. Uh, but for safety reasons, sometimes it's okay to leave it on. But again, for the purpose of saving battery, it's not good to leave it on. And also, it's very creepy. The next thing that we need to talk about will be on the background refresh. So we can go to settings. We can go to background refresh app. So this... Now, you have to understand what this does exactly. Let's say you are uh, watching a football or a hockey game, okay? And then uh, you want to go and do something else, okay? If you, keep in mind, don't, I'm not saying close the application, but if you minimize the application in the background, it's going to keep updating your scores and you'll be able to see it. And then as soon as you turn the application back on, it will be like you never leave that page. Everything will be up to date. That's what background app refresh is. So for all of this application that you have on your phone, me particularly, I have a lot, a lot of applications. So all these applications here, if I leave them on in my background, it will keep updating all the information every second. That consumes a lot, a lot of power and a lot of battery that's why for me particularly i mean if i want something i will just open it's gonna take few seconds depending on your internet connection to refresh it and to update it for you but i don't want it to be refreshing it every second that i don't need it so in your case some of some of this application might be important for you if that's so select which one is important and turn off the one that you don't need so next in the line, we are going to talk about uh, Siri. Okay, I understand that Siri this day is very advanced. You can even say, hey, your assistant's name, and then it's going to do whatever you want. For me particularly, again, it's good. I don't mind Siri to be, because 100% Siri is listening all the time. For me particularly, I don't need him or her to be listening to me all the time. If I need Siri, I will just press and hold the button and then give a command but just the fact that i don't want to go and press the button doesn't mean that i have to leave it on because every time he's listening he's doing something in the background and that definitely consumes some battery so it's under display and brightness as you always know the more bright your phone is the more power he used we always talk about the dark mode but like i said for the purpose of this video, I put it on the light mode, but highly recommended to always use dark mode. Again, it's not recommended to turn off. I mean, if you want to save more battery, you can turn off uh, 
uh, true tone, all this stuff. But, well, you are not going to enjoy your phone as much as it is if you leave it on. Some, I mean, we cannot avoid consumption of the, of the battery during the day. Now, we have to make some sacrifice. If you want to enjoy our phone as much as we like with all the advantage of, of owning a iphone 15 pro that the name says is important to leave some of this thing on but in this particular page i wanted to tell you about uh the uh the auto lock mode this is very important because sometimes we are doing something on our phone and then something cap something happens we leave the phone and we go do some other stuff let's say if i leave this on one or two or three or five minutes or even never well if we don't physically lock our phone then it's going to be on for the whole time we are gone instead of just locking up after 30 seconds so me personally, I always turn this to 30 seconds as the lowest possible I could. And sometimes as soon as I finish what I'm doing, I always lock my phone. But in case I forget, after 30 seconds, it's going to be locked automatically. So the low power mode is, I mean, you could use it if you really want to save uh, battery life during the day where you know that you're not going to have a charger or anything because what happened to low power mode is it's going to block every notification everything that comes in to reduce the power as much as possible and the, the consumption will be very very less however you're going to lose a lot of advantages of your iphone if you have it on low power mode so this one i will leave it to you to decide whether you want to always use low power mode or not me particularly i do not always use low power mode i leave it when it is about 20 percent or when i know that i'm going far and i don't have a charger and then i have to keep my battery life then i always uh, uh turn it off uh next thing talking about low power mode is whenever you are traveling this is just uh in bracket here whenever you are traveling and there's no signal Remember to put your phone on airplane mode. It's very important because what happens is the phone will always keep looking for signal and that consumes a lot, a lot of battery. So if you are going out of town that you know that you are not going to have any signal to put your phone on airplane mode. Easy to do. Bring this corner down and then choose airplane mode. And that is simple as that. The next setting we're going to talk about is under... The mail app for me particularly is important that when you go to your mails that you deactivate you deactivate the push mail which means that every time you have a mail it's going to be available to you right away okay meaning every time someone sends you a mail automatically you're going to see it you're going to have a notification sent to you whether you want to go and check it out it's going to be there but however if me particularly i i put mine on my account i set it to fetch and fetch hourly is not that i wanted to be going and pick up my mail every second because what happened is in the background your mail app is always checking do i have any mail do i have any mail do i have any mail instead of resting after 30 minutes let me check if, if there's any mail so it's better to just keep it as fetch if you want and then set the time which is going to be something manual like for me personally all my email i turn off the push which will automatically go and collect the email and tell me oh you have a mail i leave it to one hour so every one hour my phone will connect to any server go and see if i have any mail available if yes they're going to download it and send me a notification if one hour is too long for you and then you are someone that lie a lot on your mail then you might want to take it automatically and definitely leave it to push but again keep in mind that that will consume your battery but uh quickly next thing we need to do is notification notification is important meaning whenever something happened or you got a message you got a chart uh, or anything then your phone will let you know there's a couple of ways for you to have that notification okay first thing is it's going to show you have a little preview when your phone is unlocked or even lock and you have a notification on your screen okay so again whenever you have a notification 
what these are the sequence what will happen first thing you're gonna receive a ding like it depending on what song you put for the notification you're gonna receive that sound let's say do then your screen will will turn on even if you are sleeping even if it's in your pocket your screen will turn on and then after a few seconds obviously if you don't answer to that it's going to turn back off then you're going to have a uh, a small number on top of that particular application that is sending you a notification so that is a lot of steps okay sometimes your phone will vibrate along with the sound all this thing consume a lot of battery so you can go through the list depending on how many applications you have and decide how you want to receive those notifications now keep in mind that every time your screen turns on every time you have a song every time your phone vibrates it consumes what it consumes battery so if you want to reduce this on max level you can go and check on all of these applications that you have on your phone and decide it, whether you want to have a number on top of it whether you want a sound whether you want a vibration whether you don't want anything and you can decide whatever you want the battery works is based on cycles cycles mean every time you you charge your phone from zero to 100 percent and it goes down from 100 percent to zero that is one cycle if your phone is at zero and you charge it to 100 percent and it goes down to 50 percent and you plug it back to go to 100 percent is not a full cycle because the full cycle is from 100 to zero if it's halfway and you charge it you need to it has to consume the other 50 percent to be able to make it one cycle so the more cycle you go on the battery the lesser your battery life will remain so if you understand that principle then you are good to go few other things that you need to understand here heat and cold okay when your phone is hot too hot or if you are charging your phone and it's too hot or you put your phone in a hot environment that is very very bad for the battery that will kill your battery as fast as possible okay that is heat cold let's say you put your phone always in a cold environment the only thing that will happen there will be like your phone will be um the battery will drain faster very well okay well this is uh maxi limit uh, signing out don't forget to comment if you uh, want to ask me anything don't forget to like this video and uh, if you like it well how about subscribing i much appreciate it okay see you next time bye bye